The atheist philosopher Kai Nielsen gives the following illustration. He says, suppose you suddenly hear a loud bang, and you ask me, what made that bang? And I reply, nothing. It just happened. He says, you wouldn't accept that. In fact, you would find my reply quite unintelligible. It sounded to me like uh, that every argument for the existence of a transcendent cause was based on the principle you stated at the very beginning that everything has a cause. No, I didn't. Oh, you remember what you said? Yes, I remember very well what I said. Could you tell me again? I said that everything that is an event or begins to exist has a cause. Uh, fine. Uh, not the same thing. Not quite the same thing, I agree. I was flabbergasted by this. I, it it, it, it was, was pointed out years ago by Mario Bunga, among others, that science, when, a, when an area of science gets good enough, people stop asking for causes. Yeah. That, that, it, that it's a sign of an immaturity of the science. Uh, a non-deterministic theory like quantum theory must allow a lot of uncaused events. I mean, one, I, 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 I was just flabbergasted that somebody is still advancing the position that that everything exists as a cause. Well, let's re let me remind you, it's everything that begins to exist as a cause, and I believe that the quanta in quantum events themselves begin to exist, so they have causes. And uh, there's actually a controversy among scientists about what to say about causation at the quantum level. It, they don't all agree that there are quantum events without causes. Um, I think whether you agree with that or not, you're going to have uh, causal preconditions for the behavior of quantum phenomena. So whether something behaves as a wave or a particle under observation may be indeterminate, but it's still going to be caused. In that, causal preconditions have to be in place or neither one will happen. And so those events are causally conditioned, and so must the origin of the universe be. I'll try again. <laughs> I'm willing, to, it is my suspicion that once you posit that everything that exists has a cause. No, that's not what I said. Third time. Say it again. It's not everything that exists has a cause. What did you say? Everything that is an event or begins to exist, which is a kind of event, that has a cause. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Once you posit that, it is my, I suspect that you will inevitably end up with the, with, with coming up with a transcendent God, such as, a transcendent cause such as God. Mm. I agree. What I wish to say is, is that we have many, many things that begin to exist that, for which we do not know the cause. We don't have to wait for an answer from quantum mechanics. We know right now that quantum mechanics has many such things for which it does not know a cause. Does not know a cause or does not have a cause? Either. Well, that's going to No, we far. don't know that it doesn't have a cause. We don't know a cause. Well, that's so that this is a. Uh, I want to say that this idea that everything that begins to exist have a cause is an article of faith. Well, okay. There are a couple of ways that philosophers uh, explain the rationale for the principle of causality that I've invoked here. One is, uh, empirically, by noting that there is zero zero evidence uh, for any event that does not have a cause. Okay? That's an empirical uh, argument. And there are, I mean, I think it's a perfectly reasonable claim that uh, if, if we've never observed an event that we know to have no cause, then uh, we're within our rights to believe that events have causes. Uh, it actually, science depends upon that. And uh, it's one reason why quantum mechanics continues to be a going concern, because uh, in a world where there are no causes, anything can happen and for no reason at all. But there's another reason why some believe, like myself, in the principle of causation, and that is that I believe it is a, a basic principle of rationality that we know by means of rational intuition. There are a number of things that we know this way. I I think it's um, 
in the category of something that is red all over cannot be green all over. We know that, too. But we haven't examined all the red things, to be sure. We don't have to examine all the red things to be sure that anything that's red all over is not green all over. I think it's similar uh, that we know the principle of causation that I'm referring to in much the same way. Not empirically only, but by means of a rational intuition that we have of its truth. Suppose that something could come to, into existence from nothing. If that were the case, then it's inexplicable. Why just anything and everything doesn't pop into being out of nothing. But no one here tonight is worried that while you're listening to this debate, a horse may have popped into being uncaused out of nothing in your living room and is there defiling the carpet right now as we speak. As Dr. Slezik himself has written in another context, only academics could be so ridiculous. If made seriously outside the seminar room, such claims would be evidence of clinical derangement. <laughs>